Hey everybody, it's your friend Cat Sketch here again today. We're gonna do a very creepy horned character. That is super awesome. Makeup transformation of Hellboy. There is a brand new Hellboy movie coming out. Gotta be honest with you. I like the looks of the older Hellboy, in my opinion, because he looks cooler to me. So I'm gonna do the looks of the older Hellboy today. If you're upset about that, I'm sorry, but this is just what I wanted to do and to turn into Hellboy to celebrate the series. So let's get started with this makeup transformation because there's a lot of prosthetics involved. I'm super excited. First of all, I'm gonna get my hair out of the way and I'm going to tie it in a very low ponytail. Basically a braid, but that's lower because we're gonna put on a bald cap, which is one of my least favorite things to do. But if you're gonna turn into a Hellboy, you need to do it the right way. And he's bald on top of his head, near his horns, with hair on the sides and going into his facial hair. So, we're gonna do this the legit way. I'm getting some of those baby hairs slicked down with some hairspray. Use Gaff Quad if you like having your hair sticky and gross like that to make it more smooth. But then we're gonna put on a vinyl plastic bald cap. You could use liquid latex bald caps, whatever type of bald cap that you're comfortable with. I just love plastic bald caps because they dissolve with acetone. I'll show you. But first, I'm going to fit this bald cap to my head by getting some cuticle scissors and cutting around the edge so that fits my head perfectly, or perfectly as I could get it. Be careful, do not cut your ears with this. I've seen disasters of bald caps of people chopping their ears up. This is why I know there's a lot of makeup artists that want to be teaching themselves at home, but when it comes to effect stuff, I feel like you should take a couple classes, just my opinion. But I'm cutting it not only around my forehead, but around the ears. This is where it could get dangerous. But I've done this so many times. So I'm fitting it around my ears, so that my real ears poke through. Lifting the whole ball cat up once it's cut to my head shape, and then we're gonna get some Prozade. This is very tough adhesive. Put in a little plastic shot glass, and I got a disposable makeup sponge that I cut in half so that it gets a smaller, precise little area to put on my hairline, but not on my hair. You don't want this in your hair or your clothes. But on my hairline where it's gonna stick to my skin, I just put it from my head to my ears but not around my ears just yet and stick that down first then i work one side around my ears making sure not to get in my hair and stick that prosade on the skin around the ear you use q-tips for this as well and get it behind down to your neck as well not on your hair that's why we did the ponytail to get the hair out of the way if you need help from this from someone else that will be great because this could be difficult and tricky once you have your bald cap all glued down, this is the fun part, in my opinion, the only fun part about plastic bald caps. We're getting a Q-tip with some pure acetone and we're gonna dissolve the edges, making them disappear into our skin. That sounds like we're melting plastic and fusing it to our skin, no, 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 don't worry. We're gonna make sure that's completely dry, all that acetone, before getting some glue stick to flatten down those brows because Hellboy does not have any brows, and we're gonna put a prosthetic on top of our brows. So I wanna make sure to have layers of glue that's from a glue stick and not layers of glue that is prosade on your brow hairs, because if you put prosade on your brow hairs, it will rip them off. But then I'm getting this chin strap foam latex prosthetic from Rubberware. It is a more male-like square jawline chin. I use this for my Shane Dawson transformation, a lot of my Hercules transformations and Gaston and stuff like that. I'm just fitting it to my face before getting some prosade on it and gluing that down. Make sure that you look at the pictures and where you're positioning this on your face before you glue it because you could definitely glue this on upside down and it will look okay from far away. It will look okay, but up close you're gonna be like, oh wow, that is definitely upside down. But we didn't do it upside down this time, thank goodness. Once that's glued down, I'm gonna get some liquid latex with a red stipple sponge to mimic the texture of our human skin and put it on top of this prosthetic as well. And make sure those edges are smooth. And speaking of smooth edges, we are gonna get a Q-tip with a prosade to make sure those edges are flattened out and glued. 
We want smooth edges, so getting more liquid latex, not only on this chin, but on our bald cap as well. I know we dissolve some of the edges, but sometimes not all of them dissolve, so I really want to make sure it also has liquid latex on it. Then we're going to get our other prosthetic. This is a more like a caveman prosthetic, I would say. It goes from your cheekbones on top of your brows, gives a very like male shaped brow, a heavy brow, because males have heavier brow bones than females do. So I'm putting this not on my brows, but around it, around my natural brows, with some Prosade in that sponge on the bridge of my nose, my cheekbones, above the brows, on the forehead, and then we're gonna glue that down, making sure it's flat onto our face and getting more prosade under our cheeks too to make sure all that prosthetic is definitely glued down onto our skin. Two more prosthetics. I know this is a long one. This video took me five hours to make. I made these really weird. They look like Reese's peanut butter cups, but if they're made out of skin, this is gelatin, and I put it into a muffin tin mold. My boyfriend was a genius and thought of this to do the hacked off horns of Hellboy to recreate them with gelatin inside a muffin tin mold. Isn't that genius? I love him so much. I put some prosate on that and made sure they're completely glued on and dried to my skin. I can't believe that pink nail polish turning into Hellboy right now. Once those fake little horn stubs are glued on and dried, I'm gonna get the red stipple sponge again with the liquid latex to stipple that onto the edges of this prosthetic. When you're doing prosthetics, so many on your face, you want to work from the inside out. You want to think of it as like a puzzle piece and how the prosthetics lay on your face. So I'm making sure to stipple on all the edges to make them more smooth into the skin and the rest of our face, on our bald cap and everything. And once those edges are stippled on and dried, we are going to get some prose with the red stipple sponge and put a layer of that all over our foam latex prosthetics that are from MostlyDead.com. They always provide the best prosthetics for me. And this layer of prose is going to make it so that the Pax paint or whatever paint you put on your prosthetics adhere a lot better. So that's why you want to make sure you get all over the prosthetics as a thin layer and make sure that's completely dry. Then before we move on to paint, I am getting this third degree or you get more gelatin. Basically when I put on these gelatin prosthetics that I made onto my head, since I'm putting a flat object onto my round head, I am getting this third degree and putting it on the space between the prosthetic and my head to make it adhere more and to make it look like the skin's overlapping and the horns are grown into the skin just like Hellboy's. Then we're not even done with that once we have that on. I got this silicone product from Dermaflage. They're one of my favorite companies and they're so underrated but they have these syringe like silicone material and I'm doing some markings of like the skin folding from the horn stubs and smoothing that out with the cosmetic spatula and I'm doing more texture on the little horn stubs as well and I'm even doing more texture on the nose too to give it more life and to look more like a human than like a creature. Once you're done with that and it's completely dry, now it's time to move on to the paint. I'm getting this Red Mel Pax paint which is so bright and colorful with a disposable makeup sponge. I'm putting that all over the prosthetic Pax paint has Prose with paint in it so that it sticks better onto these foam latex prosthetics and I'm putting that on the foam latex prosthetics on my chin and that face prosthetic and on top of even some of the gelatin and on this bald cap. You really want to make sure you cover as much of the bald cap as you can because if you don't put Pax paint in certain parts of it, you probably will notice. So this is what takes forever. Doing this by yourself if you need help again, especially on the back of the bald cap if you're doing this for like cosplay parts. Yeah, you might need help. Don't get this in your hair if there's some poking through. Once you think you have enough Mel Pax paint on the prosthetic and your bald cap and everything, I'm gonna get this red cream paint. I know it looks like lipstick, but these are the red cream paints by Wet n Wild from their Halloween collection. I had some extras and it looks like I'm putting on that lipstick but it's just cream paint on my actual skin that matches the prosthetic paint on areas around my lips and my eyes where I didn't put that Pax paint because you don't want to put this too close to your eyes that Pax paint no 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 ma'am so this one's more skin safe that's for more prosthetics I'm putting it on my ears as well to match the rest of my skin and speaking of the rest of your skin you have to put it on your neck and I'm putting that on the silicone prosthetics two of those little stubby horns just as a base layer of red on that 
Then, speaking of base layer, we're gonna layer that on with some brown cream paint. The stub horns because they're not pure red horns. They have some texture, some shadowing, some darkness to it. Look at reference pictures to copy that. Then I'm gonna powder it down with translucent powder. And I'm getting some alcohol red paints just to get on the cracks and crevices. And I'm getting some black alcohol paint. This is gonna make it look so much better. You can even stipple it with some black stipple sponges that you get from Halloween stores. And this is gonna give the horns so much texture and life and look very much more realistic. And we're gonna put that alcohol black paint to do the frown marks, the creases and folds in Hellboy's face. You even did this on her lips, even though alcohol paint stains a little bit on lips in my opinion. Put some black cream paint there instead. And then I'm putting some more like yellow, tony, red alcohol paint over that too. And then we're gonna get some black matte eyeshadow to shadow in around the eyes to make them look more of a smoky eye of Hellboy. You don't wanna put alcohol paints that close to your eyes, so that's why we're doing eyeshadow there. Then I got some Mel Pax paint in the color Pale Mauve with the black stipple sponge to do a stipple of that to layer it of lighter red colors and tones on the highlight parts of the face, the high points on the brows on the cheekbones and the nose and some of the forehead, and definitely the chin and the sides of the head as well. And we're gonna do some more black alcohol paint lines and definitions of wrinkles and creases around his face to give him more expression and around the mouth parts since he has such an evil smile. Then I'm coloring in the waterline part of my eyes with some black eyeliner. And now it's time to move on to the hair. I got some spirit gum with a disposable makeup sponge to put a layer of spirit gum first. And then I got some crepe wool in black that I straightened out and cut to start laying his hair, the sideburns of his face, the hair that grows on the side of his face, in front of his ears. And I'm gonna put some, when you're done with that, styling it on the other side as well. He has these huge like mutton chop like looking sideburns between the his ears and the horn stubs. So we're putting that there and then we're gonna put some more on the bottom of his chin, of his huge square chin. And we're gonna put some on the top of his chin as well so he has a little soul patch situation right there. And when you're done laying all of his hair, I'm gonna get a jacket. This is more of a green tone, his is more of a khaki light green, but this is the jacket I had. And last but not least, you do not have to do this, but I wanted to say true to Hellboy and put some yellow contacts in my eyes to look just like Hellboy's eyes. And with that, we are completely done turning into Hellboy. I know this is the more old school version of Hellboy, but he's just my favorite version of Hellboy. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this makeup transformation. I think it's so interesting to watch someone that's so opposite from a character turn into that character because I am a little mixed girl female turning into this crazy Hellboy character. Trying to kiss your boyfriend as Hellboy is entertaining and only fun for me and not for him. Didn't work, he wouldn't go for it. <laughs> you wanna make angry faces and just have fun with this? I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you're crazy enough to do this makeup or any makeup from my YouTube channel, please post it on Instagram and tag me hashtag catsketch. I would love to see it. Subscribe for more videos like this. I do makeup Mondays and effects Fridays, two videos a week, beauty makeups and effects videos. So you guys can see that and more of that in the future. Now it's time for me to turn back into myself. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had so much fun doing this even though it took five hours. I even had to take like snacking breaks as Hellboy. All the products I use in this video will be listed down below in the description box. Thank you so much to MostlyDead.com for providing these amazing prosthetics. I'll put a coupon code down below where you can get a percentage off if you decide to shop their prosthetics. They also have other things and props and stuff for videos as well and looks. They are one of my favorite companies to purchase stuff for videos from. But I better get going. Taking this off takes forever. I pulled my prosthetics way too hard, way too fast, and I didn't use enough remover. So watch out for that because you could damage your skin. Use isopropyl Miracite to take off all these Prose prosthetics. And now it's time for me to go take a shower. I need to take out these contact lenses too. And remember that. And I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video, of course. Bye.